Okay, so uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to uh, generate the um, uh, general orthographic drawings um, for uh, project two. Um, this tutorial is going to be in several parts um, that will walk you through how to generate all the drawings um, uh, due as part of this assignment. Um, and we're going to start with the uh, shop drawings. Uh, I'm going to go to onto D2L. Contents, Assignments, and Project 2. I'm going to just click the little pop-out so I can keep this open. Okay, and then the first thing I want you to pay attention to is uh, <clears throat> the shop drawing uh, set of um, the list of drawings here. So these are um, the uh, individual drawings that we're going to need to generate uh, as part of the shop drawing. Uh, again, this is for part A of the um, uh, assignment, uh, Project 2. So what I want to do is first start by also paying attention to uh, um, which frame uh, I have, which material I'm building my frame out of. So again, if you had a steel seat, you're going to draw the wood frame. And if you had a wood seat, you're going to draw the steel frame. OK, so I'm going to go into Rhino. And uh, first, I want to draw uh, the plan, section, and elevation. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to. Uh, show you guys how to kind of set up the file. Um, so I'm going to first go into top view, expand that view. Uh, always before I do anything else, I want to change my units. So I'm down here again, I'm in millimeters. I'll type in units, change to inches. Um, and while I'm here, I also want to go to layout and change my layout units also into inches. OK, and we'll use that later. And uh, because what I'm doing first is I'm going to actually draw, you know, you know, like in 2D, I'm going to draft um, these drawings. Before I start drawing, I'm actually going to generate all the layers that I'll need to uh, produce my line weights. So over here in the Layers panel, uh, and if you don't have the Layers panel open, you can open it by clicking down here where it says the layer you're on. And I'll click New Layer. I'm going to make a few different layers, heavy, medium, light, super light. I'm also going to make a layer called hatch. So some of our drawings we're going to, we're going to poche with a specific hatch in order to um, indicate what material is what. So there's a layer called hatch. I'm going to make a layer called D-I-M or DIM, that stands for dimensions. So any text we use or uh, dimensions we add to our drawings, we'll go on that layer. And uh, finally, I want to make one called dash. OK. <clears throat> and before I do anything else, I also want to like, um, you know, modify the properties of these layers so that they're easy to work with. So first of all, I want to change the color of all of them to a unique color. Uh, and the color I'm talking about here is the square, uh, where you see um, they're all black right now. So I'm going to click on that square, and I'll just make all of these, you know, some uh, different color uh, so that they're easy to identify. You can choose whichever ones are most clear to you. Uh, Okay, so now when we are switching between layers and drawing with different layers, we can easily visually tell which layer we're on uh, and what layer uh, different lines are on. The next thing I want to do is change the uh, line type just for my dash layer. So again, that layer is going to um, be uh, for uh, making dash lines. So if I click under line type where it says continuous, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to dashed. So uh, that will show up as a dash line anytime I draw a line on that layer. And finally, I'm going to change the print color of each one of these to black. So the print color is the little diamond shape. I'm going to change them to black. I can actually do them all really quickly by selecting them all. 
and then changing them to black. And on super light, I'm just going to turn that one down to dark gray, just so it's a little easier to uh, keep it less, um, keep it lighter. And then under print width, I want to actually define, you know, a series of different widths um, to, to create my actual line weight. So under heavy, I'm going to change that one to 0.9. Medium, I'll change to 0.5. Light, 0.35. Super light, uh, 0.13. Etch, 1.8. Dimension, 1.8. And dash one eight. Okay, so now we have a good set of uh, layers set up. We have our file in the right units. Uh, the next step is to actually draft the um, uh, uh, projections. Okay, so if I am drafting uh, a steel frame stool, what I want to do first is uh, generate a couple of construction lines. Uh, to kind of make it easy to establish the dimensions of everything, uh, the overall dimensions, uh, before I go in and add uh, the detail of the frame itself. Now, if you go to your assignment sheet and you scroll down, uh, you can see the general dimensions of the of the um, uh, steel frame are on this uh, uh, on this little drawing here. So it's one foot by, uh, that should say one foot. So the, the overall frames are all one by one. And uh, it's one foot six inches or 18 inches tall. Um, okay, so what I wanna do first, if I'm drawing my plan, is I'm gonna change my current layer to super light. Use the command rectangle. And I'm gonna draw a one foot by one foot square. In this case, I'll type in 12. Press enter, 12, press enter. Okay, so what we've done here is we've generated the uh, outside uh, boundary of our, uh, of our object, uh, of, our, of our frame. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, draw um, the parts of the uh, frame that span across on the top. So I'm going to draw a line, and I will switch my current layer over to medium, and I'm just going to trace the outside edge of my of my square there. By the way, uh, if you're drawing uh, two lines on top of one another, the best way for you to see uh, uh, one or the other is to lock the layer that you want to be behind. So you'll see me over here locking the super light layer, which I'm going to draw all my construction lines on uh, time and time again, because I'm trying to make it so that I can draw on top of those lines and, and still see what I'm doing. So just so you know, the easiest way is to lock the layer so that you can see what you're doing. Then I also want to, uh, you know, generate the width that I need for these uh, horizontal members. I'll select them and type in offset. Under distance, I'm going to enter one because my, uh, again, if you go back to your assignment sheet and you look at the details, you can see the tubing, or if you read the material list, um, the tubing is one inch uh, tubing, which means that the outside dimensions of that material are one inch. Then I'll click towards the inside of my square. Okay. So uh, now I have the horizontal members drawn. I'm also going to draw lines just to cap the ends. Okay. And if I'm looking at the stool from the top, uh, you can see I would I would actually see two horizontal members close to me and two horizontal members in the other direction further away from me. So I'm going to draw those members as well and I want to actually show them as uh, a lighter line weight so that I can tell that you know one set of lines is, is closer and the other is further away. So I'm just going to draw in between the two um, existing horizontals. Again I'll offset those lines one inch. Okay. And then the very last thing I want to do is I want to actually make sure that I'm showing the correct order of materials at that corner. So because the design of the stool calls for um, the uprights to be full length and then the horizontal members to be welded uh, between them, to be welded to the inside, 
we actually need to show a little line there so we can tell if there's two pieces of material that are joining there. And uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and use the lighter layer because even though we are um, drawing uh, the separation between two elements, um, we're drawing them on the same face, right? So we don't want to make it look like that's a big edge. We want to make it look like this is in plane. This is all one plane. Uh, and those and those uh, edges just separate two materials on, along that plane. Okay, so now we've drawn our uh, our plan. Pretty simple, straightforward. Um, and I'm going to use this to generate uh, the elevations, which should be quick. So I'm going to go back to my super light layer, turn that on, and draw some construction lines. So uh, again. Going back to the list on the assignment sheet, we need to draw a section and then two elevations. And I'm also going to draw these lines to represent the, uh, the width uh, of, of the members, just so I can work quickly. And then somewhere down here, I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to select that line and offset it. Oops. And this time I'm going to set it to 18 inches, the height of the stool. That way we have a line um, that represents our top and our bottom. Um, okay, so if I were looking at the stool this way, what I would see actually are the horizontals uh, at the bottom going across and then just the vertical uprights. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the layer medium. I'm going to lock my construction lines <clears throat> and then I'll draw my lines. So again, I want to draw the uprights. And uh, now you could do this pretty quickly by just drawing with the polyline tool as well. Um, but sometimes it's easier just to have everything as separate lines. And then I would draw the line across that represents the horizontal span on the bottom of the stool. Offset that line as well to one inch. Okay. And then the last thing I want to do is represent um, uh, how all the joints work. So again, the uprights go full height. Uh, what that means is we need to, down here, I'm going to select these two inside edges of the uprights. Use the command split. It's asking me for the cutting object, so I want to, I want to trim these lines, or split these lines into two separate lines. That way I can have uh, these segments be a different line weight, right? <clears throat> because like we talked about in the, in the plan, if two elements are in the same plane, we want them to be separated by a lighter line weight. So I'll select those two smaller lines that I just split, right click on my light layer and go to change object layer. It should turn uh, another color. Okay, so now that elevation is essentially done. But what I would also want to do at this point is, is uh, before I get too much further, is draw my seat. Now, uh, because uh, we're going to kind of build the seat as a different uh, part of a different assignment, I'm not going to make you or ask you to, uh, um, uh, to draw the seat in a detailed way on these shop drawings. But it is important that we, um, that we show it, and that we, uh, in, in particular that we show how it connects to the steel frame. Um, because uh, we're going to need that information in order to build the stool. So I'm going to go ahead and take this original rectangle. Uh, if you don't have one, just draw a new one around the outside of the plan. And I'm going to offset it. And again, if we look at our uh, assignment sheet, you can see that the dimensions of the seat are 1 foot 3 inches. That's 15 inches. Now our stool is 12 by 12. Uh, 15 inches is obviously 3 inches more. So I'm going to offset it by one and a half, or half of three inches. I'll click towards the outside. And you can see it's made a new line um, uh, on the current layer, or the layer that I have set to current. Now what I really want here is to uh, show the seat as kind of a dash line. Now the reason is for that is because in my plan, I don't really need to know a lot of information about the seat. I really just want to know what the frame looks like because that's the main thing I'm drawing here. But it is also important to know what the relationship is or where the seat is positioned relative to the frame. 
So I'm gonna select that new rectangle, right click on dash, and change that line to dash to the dash layer. Um, and that way, it's like we're looking through the seat at the frame. So we can still understand the relationship of the seat to the frame, uh, but we can see the frame in full detail. Uh, now I can also, I'm gonna go move this up just a little bit to give myself some more space. Um, okay. And the next thing I want to do is actually draw the same, uh, uh, draw the seat uh, on my um, elevation as well. Now, if oh, actually, what I what I'll do first is I'll draw the other elevation because our seat uh, is curved and the curve is actually moving um, uh, in the other direction relative to this projection. It'll be easier to draw it. Uh, draw that projection first and then use those lines to generate uh, my construction lines for this drawing. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to super light. I'm going to select my two horizontal construction lines. Uh, just grab those control points and drag them out. I can hold shift to make sure that they're, they stay straight uh, to, to snap to ortho. Okay, and then I could also just go ahead and copy uh, the two uprights. Um, okay, and I'll change these back to my medium line weight. And then up at the top, I want to kind of draw a similar thing to what I did here. So I'll make a new line. Make sure I'm on the right uh, layer, it's the right current layer. I'll lock my construction lines. Offset that line. Oops, that's too far. Make sure it offsets by one. Go ahead and split the uprights and then put those two lines on the light layer. Oh, and then the last thing I also forgot to mention was uh, when you are fabricating this tool, uh, one thing that you'll do is um, if we zoom out in this drawing, you can see better. There's like a little cap on the top of all the uprights uh, in this tool, and that is what the 3 16 inch uh, flat bar is. So we're going to take a little piece of flat uh, solid metal and just weld it to the opening of that uh, tube just so we have a closed end and, and it's kind of easier to work with. Um, and it, it kind of forms a cleaner uh, joint. So I need to go ahead and draw that line as well in here so that I can see uh, where that will be. That's pretty easy. I'll just select the um, top edge or the top line of my uh, uprights in both drawings. Type in 3 divided by 16 and press enter. Now you can see that the distance has changed to 3 sixteenths. Okay. And I'll just select both of those lines and put them on the light line weight. Let me set that to current and then I would do the same thing over here. So offset. And there we go. Um, okay, so now the frame is pretty roughly drawn uh, uh, in my um, uh, in my two elevations. What I'm going to do next is draw the seat. So uh, again, uh, you could go back to the original file where you generated your profile line for uh, for the seat shape, uh, or we could start uh, by just drawing it again. Which is pretty easy to do. So I'll type in line. Again, I want to actually line up my seat with the center of my stool. So in this case, I can choose the option both sides. That's only an option if you use the command line and not polyline. But I'll click somewhere up in space. Uh, I'm using my smart track to draw up from the midpoint so I can see what I'm doing uh, first. I'll enter three inches. That sets the length of the line. Again, three in both directions is actually six. And then I'll hold shift to snap to ortho and draw the flat part of my seat. Then I can use the command arc. Select the option for tangent. Snap to the end point. I will enter 18 as my radius. Uh, click as close as I can to one end of the uh, line. Uh, to set the point where it intersects with my original flat line. 
then I'll choose on the, I'll click on one side to choose which side my arc is drawn on. Okay. And uh, now we could also draw a, another line to represent how long that, uh, oops, so draw a line and hit both sides. Or I'm sorry, no, draw a rectangle, use the option center, type in 15, and make it any height. You can use that to trim, control T, or type in trim. Okay, and then I will just mirror uh, this thing across the center of my original line. Make sure you have the option to copy turned on. Join those three lines. Okay, now I'm going to move this guy right down to where my midpoint is on my stool frame. So again, because of the way that the seat is joined to the frame, the curved edges are coming up um, uh, in this direction relative to the horizontal at the top. Uh, now, what I want to do is uh, give this a thickness. I'll type in offset. Now, if you are working with a wood seat, the thickness of that seat is going to be about a half an inch. So I'll type in 0.5, press enter, click somewhere up above, and then I could also draw some lines just to join the ends. And join it all together. Okay. And now, again, because this uh, seat is actually uh, uh, the edge of the seat is actually the thing uh, closest to us um, in this drawing. We would go ahead and change that to a heavier line weight. So I'll put that on medium. Um, and then I'll also go down to my super light layer, set that as current. And I can use these edges now to define what that seat will look like um, the other elevation. Go back to medium. I'll use the command polyline. So I'm going to trace the uh, top edge first, because again, that's the edge that's nearest to us. And you can see when we're looking at the seat from the side, this uh, edge starts to recede. Um, and so we could actually use the lighter line weight to draw that part of the seat. Okay, oops, I messed up a little bit. I can just drag that point. Okay, and there we go. Our two elevations are drawn. Now, I also want to draw an elevation, or I'm sorry, I want to draw a section. So uh, starting from uh, this set of drawings, I can use, uh, I, I can, uh, use these as kind of a starting point. So I'm going to draw my section uh, looking uh, this way. So I would actually go down to the layer dimension to draw my section tags. And I'll just use the command polyline. I could snap to the midpoint, drag my point out using smart track, draw a line. I don't know, just to use your judgment um, and then draw a line up again. Uh, this is a, you know, this is our section tag. So this actually represents, you know, where the section is cut through the stool, as well as the direction we're looking in that section. Once I've drawn one, I can go ahead and copy it or mirror it. I'll use the command mirror, snap to the midpoint. Okay. Now, uh, because uh, what we want to do is kind of show um, the relationship of the seat to the frame in our section. Uh, we can actually use uh, this projection and make a copy of it uh, just to kind of illustrate, uh, uh, you know, like how the seat meets the frame. So I'm going to select this whole, uh, I'm going to select this whole drawing, type in copy. Now for consistency, I actually want to snap to my original uh, or my, uh, one of my elevations and use that as a copy point to make the next drawing. The reason being that uh, 
that way the spacing is even and so we have a better kind of uh, visually we have a better understanding of what's going on okay and then i would even actually move uh, the whole thing over okay and then on this drawing mainly what we need to do here uh, is change the way we're representing the frame. So I'm going to delete the seat for now. I'm going to delete our 3 16ths inch line. I'm going to select the two uh, top edges of our frame. Use the command offset and offset it by one inch. I want to make sure that I'm <clears throat> then putting those lines on the layer heavy. So I'll right click on that layer and go to change object layer. I'll set it to current. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Like I have a line there, but because there is a um, another line in the same place, I'm actually not seeing that that line is there. If I just lock that layer, I can see that line a lot better. Um, and I'll do the same job over here, offset the top, and then change both those curves to the layer heavy. Uh, because what I'm looking at here is I'm actually cutting through the horizontal member at the top of my frame. So I want to go ahead and select the um, these two lines that represent the uprights as well. Type in split, or those four lines I should say. Type in split, use my newly offset line, and then I would make those uh, lines part of the layer heavy as well. Okay, so now uh, because we uh, we've represented, you know, like, where we're cutting through the frame. Again, uh, just to be clear, we always want to use the heaviest line weight as the section cut line. And we always want to be consistent about, you know, uh, which line weights we use across drawings. So that line weight, uh, we're just going to use to show profiles and section cuts. Okay. And then the next thing that I want to do is draw the thickness of my seat. So we're still looking at it from the side, but the part of the seat that we're cutting through because we're cutting right through the middle of the stool is actually the flat part of the seat. So I could go back and set my super light layer to current, snap to the top of the flat part of my seat, draw that line out by holding shift. Okay. And then here I'll just draw a rectangle, change my current layer to heavy. Okay. And that should represent uh, the thickness of my seat. I think I actually drew it wrong. Oh. Let me undo that. Okay, what is this line? So I'm going to go ahead and delete this line for right now so I can see more easily. <clears throat> Since it's so close to the line that shows the thickness of my seat, I'll just delete that one. Hit uh, rectangle again. Okay. And make sure I'm hitting the intersection of those two construction lines. Now I'll, I'll lock super light again so I can kind of see better. So there we go. So the um, part of the frame that we're cutting through uh, is uh, sitting right where the seat is. Uh, and then finally we would also draw another construction line to show where the uh, top of the seat is. And because we're looking at um, the inside this time we would just actually draw from the edge of where we're cutting through the seat uh, to the other edge. So uh, like I said, because we're looking at, we're looking from the center towards that edge. So we wouldn't see this edge, we would only see that top edge. So we just need to draw one more line to represent that top edge of the seat, like so. And actually we should put that layer, uh, or I'm sorry, that line on the layer light because that's, that's the thing that's kind of furthest back. Um, and I would even actually recommend putting this these two lines on the layer light. Okay. Uh, so I think that uh, concludes uh, this part of the, uh, <clears throat> of the drawing exercise. Um, so continue on to the next video uh, to learn how to model the frame and then do the rest of the detail drawings and the um, uh, cut sheet drawings.